What is an octave? In order to understand octaves, we need to revisit the basic principle of note naming. And to do this, to start with, we'll ignore the sharps and flats. The notes then are named from A to G. That is A, B, C, D, E, F, G. As you can see, this isn't very many notes. So what actually happens is the notes repeat, starting again at A. Where the notes repeat, this is the octave. So for example, we have here the A and the A, and that is the octave. You'll notice that there are actually eight notes between the two A's. And this is where the word octave comes from, cause oct is eight, as in octopus and octagon. So the octave then is where the note repeats eight notes up or eight notes down. This process of repeating the note names happens again and again, according to the playable range of your instrument. So for example, here you can see a three octave range. For simplicity's sake, I've used these examples going from A to A. However, more commonly, you tend to see it going from C to C. If you look at a piano, for example, you'll notice how it starts at C in the vast majority of cases. On a piano keyboard, you can also see how the pattern repeats itself every eighth note if we ignore the black notes, which are the sharps and flats. It's also important to know that an octave can occur between any of the notes and any of the note names. Octaves are not just a theoretical thing that exist within the realms of music or tablature. They do actually have an existence in the real world and they can be demonstrated scientifically. Here we have the illustration of a sine wave with two cycles. We know it's two cycles because it has two peaks and two troughs. If you've never seen this type of illustration before, this is how sound can look through a device called an oscilloscope. If we were to play a note exactly an octave up from this waveform, it would have exactly twice as many peaks and troughs. So an octave up is double the frequency. If we were to now take the original waveform and play it an octave down, it would half the number of peaks and troughs. So it would half the frequency. To summarize then, from the original waveform, if we double the frequency, it goes up an octave. And if we half the frequency, it goes down an octave. And this effect can be heard clearly in the music. Let's try some practical applications of this then on the guitar so you can get used to the sound of octaves. Before you start though, make sure your guitar is absolutely in tune. Otherwise, you'll be wasting your time doing these because you really won't develop an ear for them. The most obvious place to start is with the E strings. So if you play the top E string and the bottom E string, you will hear that they are both E's. These are obviously two octaves apart and there is an E in the middle. So you could try playing the bottom string, the middle E and the top E string. The middle E is on the second fret of the third string, the D string. You could also try some fretted octaves. Because they're both fretted, you can actually move them around the guitar and get used to the sound of the octave in different places. You could also try listening to octaves on the A and the G string, the D and the B string, and the G and the E string. Playing all these different octaves and trying moving them up and down the neck will give you a really good idea of how the octave sounds and theoretically you should be able to hear that sound again in the future quite easily.